woman should lose her rights when she loses her husband. But an estimated 115 million widows live in poverty worldwide. 81 million of those widows suffer physical abuse from their relatives. Physical abuse is what Diana Kamandi had to endure following her husband's death. I got widowed as a result of domestic violence. Where my, when my husband died, came home and he had decided to kill everyone of us in the house, then um, after he came, he bought a sword and he cut me. All these scars that you can see, he had cut me, he cut me even on my head, he pierced on my breast, my hand, I'm fitted with metal plates, and when his efforts did not bear fruits, that I did not die, he went ahead and killed himself. In law stand against me to a point that they even uh, decided I should be taken to court and I should be charged with this murder. The several text messages that I received, you're a murderer, you killed our son first, then you took that sword that you're speaking about and you decided to cut yourself so that you can hide the evidence that you're the murderer. It was until the CID who investigated his murder came on board and they said, we have evidence. When we arrived at the scene of crime, he had killed himself. He stabbed himself and he had not closed his eyes. So we decided to reach out to the, our intelligent department who came at around 2 a.m. before he was even taken to the morgue. And they took some photos showing the incidences of the last 24 hours. Actually, that's how I, I am free. Otherwise, I would be in Langata charged with murder that I didn't know. Things that I went through moved me to go and read through our constitution. And ask myself, does this constitution really protect a widow? I'm in the hospital. They have broken into my house. They have carried, including my bed. I leave the hospital. I'm going to sleep on the floor. For Gladys Nyangao, the loss of a beloved husband forced her to reevaluate the people she called family. Kati nilipotesa mme wangu. Wale watu wakaribu ambao tulikuwa tunakula na wao, ambao ni watu wake. Walifika wakati maali walikuja kugeuka wakawa wanasema ni mimi ndio niliua mze wangu lakini kumbe katika hiyo kusema kwa vile walikuwa wanasema hivyo hiyo ilikuwa ni njia ingine walikuwa wanataka kutumia mbinu zao walikuwa wanataka kutumia ili waninyanganye kile kidogo ambacho mzee alikuwa ameniachia wakawa wanataka kuniingiza katika mila zile ambazo hazifai nilijaribu kufanyiwa mila zile zina, zinaumiza zile ambazo mtu kama mimi kwa kusema ukweli mimi si kulelewa upande ule wa nyumbani Sasa wakati huo, sasa sikuwa ninazielewa vizuri. Sasa wakati huo ilinifanyikia, ndio ilipa, nilipata kuona kumbe maisha yako hivi. Pia kulikuwa na wale walikuwa metegea kutoka kando, pia walikuwa wanasema, wanataka kunirithi. Wakati nilijipata, nimebaki peke yangu nilitara, nilitarajia familia na hiyo clan, wasimame na mimi kwa kuninua, lakini sio kwa kuniambia tu wanataka kunirithi. Victor Lando, a family lawyer, says widows are more often than not subjected to oppressive and retrogressive practices in the name of culture. Lando elaborates that a number of legal issues are also likely to crop up once a woman loses her husband. You find in instances where someone has died in test it, you know, where they have died without leaving a valid will, uh, then you find that uh, more often than not, the relatives or the male relatives of the deceased person would uh, come in and try to deny the widow access to the deceased property um, and therefore she has to fight tooth and nail to be able to secure the property for herself and for her children. Uh, sometimes the challenge is not only because of the contestations in the family but also because of weaknesses in the law. So you find uh, a good example is the law of succession act which provides that if um, someone was married under customary law, then if they pass away and they leave behind a wife, the wife has what is called a life interest in the property of the deceased person. And this life interest terminates if she gets married to someone else or if uh, she dies. Therefore, it means, for example, that um, if, person, if, 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 if a widow uh, remarries, then she loses the property that belongs to her husband. It goes to other people who have been identified for that purpose. There are sections under the Law of Succession Act which provide that uh, certain parts of the country which are predominantly agricultural or pastoral areas 
um, they should apply a customary law in terms of accessing uh, the property of deceased persons, especially those who die interested, who do not leave uh, a will. Then the applicable law of succession in that regard is customary law. And you and I know that customary law is uh, unfair in terms of uh, how it relates to the rights of women and especially the rights of widows. Pauline Muthusi can relate to this scenario. She lost her husband the same day he came to discharge her from hospital where she had delivered a son. On his way, he got an accident. He left me at Kenyatta Hospital with his son. He went and buried him at Mwea, where the mother's hall, the parents' hall. And then I came back to Nairobi. We start feeling like, no, you're alone. This person, you're not staying for long. I wished to be with him for years, even we, we got many children. But now I'm left with one. It is immediately that uh, I was left, I came from my family, I separated from my family, which is, to me, it is dis discouraged me in a way that uh, having left my family, and now I'm going back, and I had a very big wedding at Mombasa, and everybody was like, it has been successful, she has stayed for long, having not been in bad behavior, now she's married nicely, only to be in that list, I had to appreciate the way, the, uh, regardless of the situation, the way it was, and I decided not to go back to my family. During national celebrations in Nairobi to mark the International Widows' Days on the 23rd of June, graced by First Lady Margaret Kenyatta, it was revealed that most of the issues facing Diana, Gladys, Pauline, and many other widows are contained in the Law of Succession Amendment Bill 2016. I managed to meet the Deputy President last year. When I took to him the statistic, he was shocked. The only thing he did before we even finished two sentences, he called uh, the CS gender. And he told CS, I have a very serious woman here. Can you look at these statistics? Is it real? Do you know of the International Widows Day, a day ratified by UN since 2005? It has never been celebrated in Kenya. We managed to push for it to be celebrated last year. For having formed over 47,000 groups of widows in this country, the country's leading being the Western, Western and Nyanza because of the HIV. There are so many deaths. Uh, we went to an island in, uh, in uh, Lake Victoria called Mageta Island. A widow at 19 years widowed twice. We pushed the government and the government came on board and decided to partner with widows. These concerns include making provision for situations where the family home is on communally owned or unregistered land, expanding the definition of matrimonial home to include property providing basic sustenance or income to support the surviving spouse, and making provision that the applicable law in matters of succession to be the Law of Succession Act and not customary law. This law will in turn support the prohibition of violations of widows and widowers' essential rights bill 2016, which if enacted will make it possible for a widow or a widower to inherit properties left behind by their spouses and to continue using their name. This, however, does not mean that widows whose rights are violated cannot seek justice. We have a very strong legal framework. We have international treaties on the rights of women. We have the African uh, Charter on Human Rights. You have the Constitution of Kenya. You have the Children Act. You have the Law of Succession Act. There are so many laws that, if applied properly, uh, can be able to uh, safeguard the rights of widows and the rights of widowers in Kenya. However, we also still need to have uh, goodwill from government, goodwill from other players, and uh, also to have uh, widows and widowers identified as a vulnerable category of, of people in need of special care and protection. Uh, people normally just uh, pass it off, but the same way you protect the rights of children, the rights of the elderly, uh, the rights of persons with disabilities, I think there's a special vulnerability for widows, especially those in the marginalized areas where customary law is still very, very much prevalent. And to ease their financial burdens, widows can take advantage of economic initiatives the government has put in place in support of women. These include the Youth Enterprise Development Fund, Women Enterprise Fund, WESO Fund, and National Government Affirmative Action Fund. The law has certain stipulations on who is entitled to the property of a deceased person. So it follows the bloodline, so to speak, 
therefore it will go to the spouse and then to the children of the deceased person. Stipulations in law uh, that uh, provide for how the property is to be determined. However, the law also allows for customary law to come in. Now what the courts do is the courts supervise how this property is distributed so that uh, the girls are not left out of inheritance and the boys don't inherit too much. But the, the law has stipulations on how uh, you go through an intestate succession or how you go through administering a will of a deceased person. Through this journey of life, one is never guaranteed of tomorrow. But that doesn't mean that when one loses their spouses, it is the end of life. As a society, we need to rethink of how we treat our widows and widowers out there. The least we can do is hold their hands as they walk through this journey without their loved ones. Emily K. Bade reporting for Channel One News Hour.